Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering Substitution by CS50's Introduction to Computer Science. So in this problem set, we'll be entering a key of 26 alphabets and with our accordance to the key, a plain text will be converted into a cipher text. So if you guys have watched the walkthrough by Brian and read through the problem set, you guys should be able to understand what's going on and what we are supposed to do. So I'm just gonna start with the walkthrough. But before that, let me just download the files that are required. So the first thing we are, we are gonna do in solving this problem set is checking if the user has provided a valid key. So the key has to be 26 unique characters independent of the case of the characters. Next, we have to make sure the user has entered two arguments. If it's one or more than two, we print out substitution key. So let's do that first. If argc is not equals to two, we want to print out usage dot slash substitution key. All right, so that part is done. Next, we have to check if the user has entered 26 unique characters independent of its case. And for that, I'll be creating a function and I'll be calling it check char. And it will be taking it in a string, which is gonna be the key entered by the user. And then it's gonna return a Boolean true if the user has entered a valid key and false if the user has not entered a valid key. All right, so first and foremost, we want to check the length of the key. So we can use uh, int length, length equals to sure length key, okay? So for us to use sure length, we have to include string.h and that's about it. So we check if the length is not equals to 26, we want to return a false. That was very straightforward. Next, we want to check if all the characters are unique. And for that, first and foremost, let's convert all the letters to either uppercase or lowercase to make our life easier. And in this situation, I'll be changing all the key to an uppercase value. And to accomplish this, we have to look through the string and index into every character and change the character. And while doing so, we can also check if all the characters are alphabets. If they are, we can continue and if they are not alphabets, we can just return a false. And to check if they are alphabets, we can use the isAlpha function, which is provided by CS50. isAlpha, we have to, before we use it, we have to include ctype.h. Alright, done. Is alpha key. Yep. So if it's not an alphabet, we want to return a false easy and afterwards we want to just convert everything to uppercase and to convert everything to uppercase we can use the to upper function so we can just take key i equals to to upper key i okay let's just double check how this function works so it takes in a character as input and returns the uppercase equivalent okay so it seems to be working fine then we want to check if all the characters are unique and for that we can use a nested for loop so how is this nested for loop gonna work so let's say in the scenario where the user has entered this key so first and foremost this letter will be checked with this letter this letter this letter and so on and so forth all the way until the end of this key after we are done with the first letter we'll be moving on to the second letter and we want to check with all the letters at the end here and then the third letter and we'll be checking all the characters at the end here so we can do this by using a nested for loop okay so the first for loop is this one the for i and the next for loop, we can just add it here, int j equals to zero, uh, j less than length, j plus plus. All right, so first and foremost, the i is equals to zero, so this is selected. And then this j, we want to start it from the letter after i, okay? So we want to start it with i plus one. So this will be checked with this, then this will be checked with this h, then this will be checked with p, and this will be checked with R and so on. So let's do that. If key I is equals to key J, okay? If that is the case, we know that there has been a repeated letter. So return false and we are done. And then right after, after we have checked all the conditions to check if the user has entered an invalid key, we can return a true because we know that the key is now valid, okay? So it seems to be correct we have added the required haters and we can just give it a quick check by creating the code make substitution some errors yep 
I forgot to add in the semicolon and the function prototype. Make substitution, no errors. Awesome. Now let's try with a key. But before that, let's print out that key must contain 26 unique characters if the checked character returns a false. So if check char arg v1, which is the key, returns a false, then we want to print key must contain 26 unique characters. All right. So that's done now. Make substitution. Forgot a semicolon. Okay. So let's try perhaps this. Okay. No errors. Uh, let's try perhaps a K at the end. Okay. I just realized the problem with my code. So the problem is that we have to convert all the letters into uppercase before doing this nested for loop. Okay. So let's just bring this outside and create another for loop. So for int i equals to zero, i less than length, i plus, there we go. Now this should be working. And it's just a small little mistake. Make substitution. There you go. Now let's try the original i, no error. Okay, so it seems to be perfectly fine now. Let's try another substitution key. Okay, no errors. Let's try to change it up. Uh, let's add in ko. Okay, 20, you have to enter 26 unique characters. Awesome. Now, let's move on to the next few steps. Now, since we have checked if all the characters are unique, we now prompt the user for the plain text. So plain text equals to get string. Done. And let me just quickly initialize this plain text. It's going to be a string. All right, done. And we forgot something. We have to return a one afterwards is the problem set once there you go return a one immediately and then our program must output a cipher text followed by the plain text corresponding cipher text so how are we gonna do that so now we want to convert the plain text to a cipher text with accordance to the key the user has entered and let's say this is the key so let's say the user entered a b c d as a plain text and this A is going to be converted to a V, B is going to be converted to a C, C is going to be converted to a H, and D is going to be converted to a P. And if it's Z at the end, Z is going to be converted to a I. As you can see the pattern, the relationship between the plain text and the key is based on the position of the letter with accordance to the position in the alphabet. So for example, A is the first character in all of the alphabets. C is the third character in all of the alphabets. Z is the 26th character in all of the alphabets. And this will be corresponding to the key we have above. So now we have to convert the plain text to the position of the character in the alphabet. So if we have the plain text, which is A, A is going to be equal to, in the ASCII value chart, A is going to be equal to 26. So now we have to convert a 26 to 1, to 0 actually because in programming we like to start with 0 onwards so we want to convert this a to a 0 and c to a 2 and z to a 25 so we have to minus all of these letters as key value by 65 so how are we gonna do that we can do that with a quick for loop int i equals to 0 i less than length i plus plus but for us to use length we have to get length string length sorry plain text okay done uh, let's initialize the length. There you go. So now we want to loop through all of this plain text and convert the as key value of the letter to the position of the letter in all of the alphabets. What we have to do is plain text i equals to plain text equals to uh, minus equals to 26 if it's an uppercase letter and minus as you can see here 97 if it's a lowercase all right 97 if it's a lowercase so it's gonna be this if it's a lowercase so we have to check if it's an uppercase or a lowercase by using some of the functions provided to us by the ce library we can check with the use of is lower or is upper so we can do uh, if plain text i is lower then we can minus 97 and if it's the other way around is upper we want to minus 65 okay so that was pretty straightforward what we are doing here is converting the ascii values 
to the position of the character in the alphabet. A is going to be 0, B is going to be 1, C is going to be 2, and Z is going to be 25. So now that we have done that, we want to convert this to the ciphertext. So now the ciphertext I, and for that we have to declare a ciphertext variable as well, and it's going to be of type character array of length of the same length as the plain text plus one to add in the now terminator. So the ciphertext is going to be the key, which is argv1, okay? And to make our life much more simpler, we can declare a string key, which is going to be argv1, okay? So now we don't have to always write argv1. So ciphertext key, then it's going to be plain text i, okay? because this plain text is going to be converted to the position of the alphabet. And then now, once more, we want to check if the ciphertext is an uppercase or a lowercase. If it's a lowercase, we just let it be because the original is lower. And if it's an uppercase, we want to convert back to a lowercase. So now we check is if is upper ciphertext i. If it's upper, we want to convert it back to lower because the original letter was a lowercase. So how we can do that is by seeing the difference between the uppercase and the lowercase. 97 minus 65, which is 32. So we can do ciphertext i plus equals 32. Done. So this is going to be something similar for the uppercase as well. We want to make the ciphertext i equals to the key and the position of the letter we have found. And then we check, this time around, we check if it's lower. If it's lower cipher text i, then we want to convert it back to uppercase because originally it was uppercase. So cipher text i minus equals 32. All right, so now it seems to be correct. Let's try to just make, make substitution, some errors. Here we forgot to put a semicolon, make substitution, some errors, ciphertext i equals to plain text i. So I guess we can't do that. We can just create another variable of name index. So index is gonna be plain text i minus 97. Okay, so this is gonna be index. And here again we have we can use index equals to plain text minus 65 this is gonna be index let's try again okay no errors make substitution no errors awesome now we want to print what is the ciphertext so we're gonna print f all right but for us to use this we have to end off with a null terminator to specify to the compiler that the string has come to the end so ciphertext length is equals to the null terminator Okay, awesome. Make substitution, dot slash substitution. We can use an example that they have given us. For example, this. Okay, awesome. Let's enter hello. The output is ehbbq. Great. Okay, so it's working awesome. Let's try this. Plain text is hello world. And the output is jrssb. Okay, so I think I know what's the error. The error is that we only check if it's upper or lowercase characters. However, in the situation where it's neither uppercase or lowercase character, we still want it to print out the comma or the space. All right. So here it's going to be else plain text I, sorry, cipher text I is equals to plain text I. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. Make substitution. Here we go. Hello world. Okay we have the comma and everything let's try hello comma world okay sorry hello world all right so it does follow the convention we have entered if it's capital letter the output is also capital letter and if it's small letter the output is also small letter let's try to enter the check 50 and hopefully everything's fine all right so everything here seems to be correct I hope you guys have benefited from this video. If you guys did, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you guys have any questions, comment down below and I'll try my best to answer you guys. That's been the end of substitution and see you guys on the next one. Bye bye.